Swift, you should buy a 2021 Honda Pioneer 1000 dual clutch transmission deluxe package. But we're also uh, giving the Honda Pioneer a 1,000 mile um, review and overview. And if people out there, if you should buy a Honda, um, if you do, what options you should get, and just really are they reliable or not. Now this is the 1,000 EPS, which means it's about, it's in the middle of the package. So it's, it's actually deluxe. Um, but it's the Deluxe EPS um, 1000 Honda Pioneer. This unit only has about 980 miles on it, and it's it's been, so far, it's been really good to us. Now, if you're going to buy something like this, it kind of depends on what you're going to use it for. If you want something that's off-roady, but can still get your chores and work done, I head down to the dealership and either get a uh, Honda Pioneer 700 or a Honda Pioneer 1000. Now, if you want something just for straight off-road, I would uh, I'd go look at the Honda Talent at the Honda dealership, your nearest Honda dealership. Um, I would say they'd, they'd probably do better off-road. Um, see this, the, the Honda Pioneer, or the Honda Talents have like, 16 in ground clearance, this has only like 12.9, so it's it's pretty similar, but that just has, you know, Fox suspension, so it has a lot better suspension, a lot better ride. So this this one with the suspension in the front, the suspension in the front's really well, but suspension in the back's for work, so it's really stiff, so you can put 1,100 pounds in it. That is the payload on this thing. Um, if you went how we went and got the foldable up seats, um, you could still have the payload as much. You actually get two side doors and you can hold five people. Now, the back seat on these things is not really that good. You don't really get much leg room. You're sitting in the thing and your knees are about touching your chin. Um, but if you needed to, you could hold five or uh, an extra two small people. It's a pretty good machine. Has pretty pretty good amount of room. Um, a lot a lot better than Kawasaki mules that that's the only other side by side we've had and been tested. Um, also, I've been in a Hunt or a, I've also been in a Yamaha Wolverine, and I don't think they have as much room as this or the Kawasaki really. They're actually kind of a small little thing. Um, you know, the back seats can be pushed in and everything. So I guess you have that for you. And they have better back seats. Um, if you really cared about back seats, yeah, I'd go get a, a you know, Can-Am or something. But if you are mainly having two to three people and you really only sometimes need your back seats, I recommend this Honda. So now we're at to the back. Now we're at the back of the Honda Pioneer 1000, and the thing you get is these safety guards for your back seat passengers. You also get this roll cage, a nice extra roof. Um, other than that, tailgate, lights, exhaust, and hitch is all the same. Um, now this bad boy down here can tow 2,000 pounds. Um, that's that's really not that bad. That's actually very very well. I think it's second in its class. I think the um, Polaris Rangers can tow 2,500 pounds. But that's the next thing I want to talk about. They are belt driven. The only thing that's automatic transmission, it's, it has a transmission just like an automobile. Um, the, the only thing that has a real automatic transmission is a Honda, and if you count the Mahindra Rocksaur, that actually can have an automatic or a manual transmission. See, you can register that thing, so I don't know if I'd call that a UTV, ATV, but if you did, that's another thing with a real automobile transmission so getting into the honda pioneer you have this 
door handle right here. You can also lock it right there. Have our very muddy mirrors. But you do have a roll down old fashioned crank window. So it ain't ever gonna break on ya. You, uh, you jump into this thing. Bedroom, I'm about five, six, five, seven. I have tons of it. Headroom, absolutely tons of it. Um, the seat on this thing doesn't move, but you don't really need it to move. Anyways, you shouldn't have anybody under 16 driving it. So, yes, technically I shouldn't be driving it, but we have our own land and we drive it on our own land, so yes, you can. But does it really matter? Because most people are going to be relatively tall driving a UTV like this, and there ain't going to be really no five-year-old kid. But what you get with this Honda Pioneer EPS Deluxe is you get paddle shifters, you get an automatic, manual, and a sport mode. You can go to Walmart and get an additional $15 shower speaker and stick it there. You have your automatic transmission with low, high, neutral, reverse, and park. You get your four-wheel drive shifter. You have turf mode. It means it only sends, it sends most of the power to one of the back wheels, depending on how you turn. Tool drive, which is equal. Four-wheel drive. And your diff lock. And that's all of that. Um, Hondas do kind of have a problem with their transmissions. It takes a little bit for them to shift. But I wouldn't really worry about that because it just takes electronics a long time. But you can actually feel it whenever you put it in the four-wheel drive. And you can tell if you're on four-wheel drive. Now, this one, they all have the same exact keys. But since we have the cab on this thing, this is the two keys that come with it. And you can lock the doors. Just close this here and stick the key in the right way. And you can... And you can lock this. So if you're ever into town or somewhere where you didn't want anybody to steal anything, put your keys in your pocket, lock up the doors, ain't nobody going to steal it. Yes, they can break the glass, but they still can't open up the door. And at that point, it would be worth your time. So you stick the key back in, turn it, pull it back out, and the door will open. Now, another thing is, is our side cubby storage. Um, the Pioneers don't have relatively too much storage. I would say their computers, like that Kawasaki Mule has more, Can-Ams have more, Polaris's have more. So with storage on this thing, you're kind of out of luck. But getting into here, you first have, well, let's go over the light switches. You have your light switches. Um, I can turn the key on. And step out here real quick. We have nice LED lights. They're on bright right now, so sorry about that out there. This is regular daytime. And this is off. Now what you have to do is once you first get into the Pioneer, you have to wait until, until it says what thing you were last on so you can let the injectors go. Um, I'm not going to be starting it, but yeah. Um, I also went over all this. You have a little bit of storage up here, a little bit of storage down here. You have an extra pair of gloves. But you also have your winch thing. And, um, it depends on how you get this done and how you get this optioned. You could get a different remote. You could get it wired somewhere. But this is just how ours came from the dealership. Um, but yeah, other than that, that's pretty much all for storage. Um, you can lift up this seat. I'm going to unbuckle this seat belt here. But you can. Uh, I don't know if I can do it one-handed, everybody. Nope. But you do have, I think you do have storage under there, but it's usually under there. It's just for maintenance. 
let's get to here, the front center thing. Just flip this up, turn it. Come over here, flip this up, turn it. Cover should come right off. Might just be a little stuck. There we go. You have your battery, your coolant, um, all your wires and everything. Stuff for the winch is probably back there. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I think that was this hole is for a secondary battery. Yes, you can get a secondary battery for this thing. That's not what we have option for it. Now we did buy this plow with it. And there are two different plows. I think we got the better option for the plow. Um, but we didn't get the hydro hydrostatic, hydro um hydro fluid, whatever you call it. I'm sorry, I'm out of words today. But we did get this K what is it? KFI plow. Um this does come with this machine. We did not buy it um afterwards. And it just hooks up to the winch in the front. Let's go to the winch right now. There's the nice winch thing. Here you can get to the back, depending on what kind of winch you get. There's your free spool and non-free spool. I think this is either a five or a 6,000 pound winch, and it's very, very nice. Um, so we hook up to our plow so we can plow in the winter time. So now we're gonna go after what I like about it, what I hate about it, and just some weird things, if there are weird things about it. What I like about it is your nice LED lights. They are very, very bright at nighttime. We've rode this thing lots of times at nighttime, and it is very, very bright. I like the winch and the plow setup. They did a good job. Um, and overall, it's, it's pretty good. I really like the cab. It really does block out a lot of the wind and stuff. Um, but there are some gaps in here. But other than that, I really, really, really love the cab. Another thing is our Kawasaki mule can only hold like 600 pounds. This can hold 1,100 and can tow 2,000. Absolutely love that. You can tow whatever you need. You can haul whatever you need without not worrying. All right, I think um, let's get to the complaints. Um, I think there might be a little bit more complaints and likes, but, you know, whatever. Um, what I kind of don't like is um, me and my dad were out here for about an hour just getting the paneling on for this door. And it took us about an hour for each door. Um, I don't like the doors. They took a long, a long time to get on. And we actually had to go back through and tighten everything. Um, that's understandable. Um, another thing I don't like is cup holders. They have little things in it. You can't fit a regular, like, 20 or 26 ounce cup in there. You have to get, like, a small water bottle that will fit in there. I don't really like that. Now, yes, we did option this thing for the five-seater, but, um, another thing that I don't like is this is hydrostatic for the dump bed, so there's a helper for it. But there's a safety latch under the seat, so if you have wood or something in there, you can't just pull the thing, you have to lift up the seat and do it every time. Honda, you made a mistake on that, and I absolutely hate it. I'm sorry, but you don't need an extra safety latch. Absolutely hate that. Um, that's, that sums about all of it. Um, don't really have too many complaints about it, but this is a wonderful and great machine. And if you ask me, I would give it about a 9 out of 10 for what I would like it for. But like I said at the beginning of the video, depends on what you're going to use it for. If you're just going to use it for, I don't know, taking feed from your shed to the chicken coop, well, you wasted $20,000. I'd go out and buy something cheaper that... You know, it might be belt driven, but if you're not going to work with it hard, why would you get something this expensive? 
Now, if you want something for work and play, I would recommend this one. This is a perfect machine. Um, it, it, it can go 60 miles per hour and it's 1,000 cc, so it's the biggest motor that you can get for this thing. Um, you know, it's, it's a really, really good machine and, you know, I, I really love it. But if you're going to use it for kind of what we use it for, a work slash play, it works out perfectly. Now, if you want something just for an off-roader, playing, and all that other stuff, just no work at all, um, I wouldn't recommend getting this. I'd recommend looking at an off-road machine itself. But if you get a uh, Honda Talon, or if you want to go to the Can-Am and look at the X, X3, or a Can-Am off-road side-by-side, -side, I would rather go with one of those two options. But yeah, that about sums it up for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope I helped you out a little bit. Um, haven't had too many complaints or about it, and we've liked it a lot. I hope that helps you guys out. We'll see you next time on Wade Farms.